I don't think it's ugly. That's a fine machine. I'd love to see it run a Linux distro. That PC would be better if you installed a Linux distro like Sorry, that PC would be better if you installed a popular Linux, Linux distro instead. I think probably it's better off to set up Linux on something. Let me see. Friends like Club Penguin. Oh, you guys want Linux. I'll give you Linux. Last time I was showing off my Gateway Profile 5.5. I bought the computer for $12, but I spent about three times the price of the machine in components to upgrade it, even if the all-in-one design limited me in terms of GPU or motherboard upgrades. For what the computer had in it already, though, it was able to run Windows XP and some other programs on it just fine. Gaming was a bit trickier, but most games of the time, like Hamsterball here, were able to run just fine, though some exceptions, like Portal, weren't quite as smooth. I also talked about some of the profile's more unique hardware. Like it's pretty decent internal speakers, which could take input from an external audio source, and it's VGA input along the back, which allowed the all-in-one to function as a basic VGA monitor in addition to a computer. If you want to know more about the profile and watch me perform the upgrades, you can see it all in that video. But for now, we're going to focus a little less on the hardware side of things and take a look at software, specifically operating systems. Now I'm going to confess right off the bat that I was intending to mix it up a bit like last time I did something like this, using a few older versions of Windows, a few newer ones, and some Linux distros, but sadly pretty much every pre-XP version of Windows I tried didn't quite work, even Windows ME. Unfortunately, unless you guys really want to see DOS running on this machine, there isn't much more I can show in terms of older software. To make up for that though, I figured this time we'll look at a few more of the modern versions of Windows, and a few more Linux distros also. And that. Let's get started with a new one this time. Something a bit less well known, Windows Longhorn. Longhorn, for those of you who don't know, is the ill-fated project to follow up on the success of Windows XP while a later project which would become Windows 7 was in the works. You can learn more about it in my Windows Vista video, but essentially the Longhorn project was entirely reset, and what eventually came out of it was what we now call Windows Vista. As for what was scrapped though, it's a pretty interesting departure from Windows XP, introducing a sidebar for web-enabled applications, a new graphical theme, and plenty of more minor features. Surprisingly, the trial version of Longhorn actually runs on the profile, and it does so pretty well. Well, performance-wise, that is. In terms of stability, Longhorn's a hot mess, with graphical glitches here and there, and complete hang-ups not being uncommon. It's certainly not an OS I could use regularly on this machine, but Longhorn is definitely interesting. Feels like what more recent versions of Windows could have become had they retained the design aesthetic from Windows XP. Of course, like I said, the version of Longhorn I used never did see the light of day, and after about a year or two, its successor, Windows Vista, would be released. Vista itself was notorious for its largely higher-end system requirements, and while the profile can install it and boot to it, it doesn't have the chops for the fancy Vista effects like Arrow. Other than the visual limitations, which can be attributed to the unimpressive Intel GMA900 included on the thing, Vista runs as you'd expect. The fact that the Profile 5.5 was released in 2005, one year before Vista though, makes this pretty unsurprising. Moving right along, I tried installing Windows 7, and just like Vista, it worked with almost no problems. Except for the minor hitch with installing the drivers for graphics and sound. See, the drivers available online for the profile are written for a Windows XP system. Thankfully, even though Vista and 7 both use a more recent driver model, they do retain support for XP drivers, so long as they run in XP compatibility mode. Here on 7, Windows actually noticed this automatically and made the change for me, which made the installation process just a bit less headache-inducing. One of the nice things about the profile being able to run Windows 7 is that we're finally back under the Microsoft umbrella in terms of legacy support. It also means that most programs, which normally would either not run on Windows XP or complain while doing it, start up in Windows 7 without any fuss. In terms of both forward and backwards compatibility on the Profile 5.5, Windows 7 is probably your best bet. I want to take a brief interruption here to talk about running Linux on the Profile. A lot of you guys suggested it, and honestly, I feel I brushed over it a little too quickly last time when I was talking about the TC1100 where I looked at two distros, only one of which actually worked, and even at that, it didn't work very well. So today, I have not just one, but two. Two distros of Lin- What? <sighs> right. Three distros of Linux to check out on the profile this time. 
Just like last time, I figured I'd take a look at Ubuntu. It didn't work all that well on the TC1100 with a 1.1GHz processor, but on the profile, with a CPU about three times faster, it actually enters the realm of usability. Of course, there are still other OSs I've tried that are a bit more responsive, but on the profile, Ubuntu isn't actually a bad choice. A bunch of you also suggested Lubuntu, which is designed specifically with older hardware in mind. And you know what? It runs really well. It's responsive, snappy, and I can drag Windows around with almost no graphical artifacts, which it should be noted the same can't be said about Windows, even XP. And another thing that can be said about Linux, but not XP? Linux was the only family of OSs to automatically detect my graphics adapter and use the native resolution and color depth of the display without me having to install a graphics driver. Now sure, I'd be surprised if the GPU wasn't being used as anything other than a frame buffer here, but still, it's actually nice to have an OS boot up without me having to change a bunch of settings first thing. Overall, Lubuntu runs really well on this thing, and I may hold on to it if I ever need to do anything Linuxy in the future. Actually, I might even want to dual boot Linux with my Windows XP installation. Think about it. I can have a PC that's compatible with all my Windows software, but has all the perks of running Linux. I mean, really, in that case, I just get you the- get the- yeah, yeah, you guys get the joke. The more observant of you, or at least the ones who bothered to actually look it up, have no doubt caught my not-so-subtle easter egg pointing you all to my new personal favorite distro of Linux. Hannah Montana Linux. I mean, what's not to love? You get this awesome wallpaper, a beautiful graphical theme making use of various shades of pink, a set of custom, unofficially Hannah Montana branded icons, and all sorts of pre-installed programs. I mean, what Hannah Montana fan wouldn't want programs like Hannah Montana Bash, Hannah Montana Office, and best of all, Hannah Montana System Settings? Really, I can't recommend this OS enough. It's easy to install, runs great on the profile, and comes with an amazing new look you won't find anywhere else. <sighs> okay, okay. I think, I think that's enough Linux for one day. Let's take a look at, uh, <sighs> Windows 8. Some of you might remember that Windows 8 was the latest version of Windows I was able to get working on the TC1100, and it looks like the profile is doing just as well. Of course, after the installations, you might notice a little problem. Yeah, graphically, Windows 8 is not looking too hot. But hey, that's what happens with this GPU. You just have to install the drivers and... Oh, driver doesn't work. Huh. The problem here is, the only driver that exists for the Intel GMA900 is a Windows XP driver running under the XPDM. Windows Vista and 7 were able to still support it through backwards compatibility, but starting with Windows 8, Windows no longer supports XPDM drivers. What's really frustrating is that it looks like the GMA900 is one of the few Intel graphics cards to not get a second WDDM driver, meaning there's not much I can do with this, other than accept the 800x600 resolution and 8-bit color depth. Thankfully, despite the rather unfortunate graphical limitations on the profile, the Metro theme on Windows 8 actually doesn't look half bad, and in terms of performance, the profile can still run the OS without a problem. Not entirely preferable results, but it does run, and that's all that matters here. And finally, we have Windows 10. Will it run on the profile, or will it freeze on the install screen like it did with the TC1100? Well, I'm happy to say that it actually managed the former. Sure, it still had the ugly graphical limitations during the installation, but upon reaching the desktop, man, it actually looks pretty good on the profile here. With Windows 10 installed, I actually wanted to try some of the more recent software that wouldn't work on the original XP installation, like Portal 2. The profile actually does surprisingly well with Portal 2, especially compared to the frame rate I was getting in the original Portal on low settings. I'm honestly surprised that such a small box from over a decade ago could pack enough power to... wait a second. Alright, alright, I'll show you guys what Windows 10 really looks like on the profile. The installation actually did work this time, and upon reaching the desktop, I was met with the same default graphic settings from Windows 8. It's a shame, really, because for such old hardware, Windows 10 actually doesn't run that poorly. Granted, it uses much more of the system's memory as can be seen by this humorously large task manager, but for a 13-year-old computer, I'm just glad to see it be able to run Windows 10 at all, even if I am rather limited in what I can do with it. Anyhow, I think that's enough OS installations for one video. I tried my best to cover most of the recommendations you guys gave me, and don't think this is the end of me covering the profile either. I still have tons of hardware upgrades I'd like to look into, most of which were suggestions, so who knows what might happen to the profile next. For now though, I think I'm going to return it to what I know best. 
good old Windows XP. And Hannah Montana Linux. 